Welcome to okay, the podness okay, okay. with Face, Pat, know, and Tiz. But, uh, what's up, guys? Welcome to the pod. A show with three friends separated by distance, by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I am one third of the partners. It's your boy Tiz, and I'm along with Rather Tatapon. It's Pat and Juan, the one other third of the partners. Along with dramatic pause, real long. What's happening? You know, I had to get that smoke out. Shit, I ain't gonna choke. What's happening, man? It's space in the place, somewhere in the race, but we continue to win every week, regardless of where we at. What's going man. on with y'all, fellas? Man, I don't know, man. We out here. We out here. Uh, we gearing up for next week. Um, got a lot of big things coming. Um, let's get off into some things, man. Let's do a quick a little housekeeping, mental health check in, and then we'll get off into the, our normal shit, man. Um, first off, uh, I'll start off the mental health check in. Um, I'm feeling weird. Um, I feel drained from the weekend. I uh, went to Jacksonville. Um, so I was down there. So it was a lot, you know, we was around a lot of people. It was a lot going on. Had some stressful moments, but I made it through. So I ain't tripping. But I think overall, the biggest uh issue is just kind of recouping from that and getting my energy back up like my chest is sore as fuck my body feel weak my brain feel tired just like holding together but the good thing is did not take uh my hydroxyl through every panicky moment with just breathing so that's like the first time i've done that that's since good. i started this salute to me on that um yeah um I'm looking forward to next week uh going to see family for that kind of get that last little bit of immersion therapy in, and also just uh kind of get mental clarity one more time and that last little stretch before I go back to work when I come back. So we're in the home stretch of things. Um, I'm hoping that I can keep this up, be relying on the meds and go. And once I can get there, that means I'm at a good place where I should be at least functional. Um, How functional, I'm not sure yet because you've been to the, the real test test. But yeah, man, this week is good. It's a good week for the first time I can actually um year episode is coming up this is coming week so we got our year anniversary we got a lot of cool things coming for the pod squad this week uh should get old should get our new people kind of caught up on our journey to this point should give our pod squad members our a1 day ones uh a cool live experience so they can get a glimpse behind the screen um as we record next week's podcast um it'll be going out live on youtube and uh, we might have some other goodies for y'all, man. But y'all stay tuned. Like first year, we're concluding. And uh, we'll be kind of just, you know, celebrating the year, our first year as podcasters, our first year as YouTubers, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, man, we got a lot to talk about. So get with us next week. Um, I'm excited about that. And yeah, like I said, it's a good week. Um, I don't need no support today, but tomorrow is a new day. So just keep being my friends. And I love y'all. And yeah, man. How y'all be, man? How the week going? What's up with y'all? I'm uh, oh. I'm good. That's it. I'm good, man. I ain't... <laughs> I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. Well, all right, then. <laughs> I'll tell you I that. had a day yeah, off. Shit. I have a day off. I ain't going to go into it too much. <clears throat> Today was good. I got stuff done. Right. right. whoop de doo <laughs> Need to finish some more <laughs> stuff. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Right well, on. I had to, I took the day off today. I needed a mental day because I was having an episode. Well, I had an episode most of all night and through this morning. So body and just was all off whack. Mentally was all off whack. So I ain't really get out of bed till like 10, 1030. Um, luckily, I was able to switch my shift until tomorrow. So good to go. I took the day off just to try to get mentally correct. Um start conversing more with my significant other, letting her know what's going on more on a case-to-case basis and just how I'm personally feeling when I'm going through certain things. So we talking it out with kind of helping more, I can say that. Um, Excuse me. Uh, But all in all, I think I'm doing good now. Can I ask you a question uh, from a mental health Mm -hmm. standpoint and a connection? So do you feel like talking it out, like what you're going through with her has like, allowed y'all to become closer or like connect on a different level and i'm only asking that throughout my experience i feel like ironically the worst i've ever felt in my life the best i'm probably in a relationship and i feel i'm talking i'm actually letting her mm-hmm. oh yeah it gives it gives both people a different perspective of like a different side of because most most everybody um has something or some feeling 
they feel insecure or not sure about actually expressing all the way verbally because they don't feel they don't know how somebody else will take it or or something. But we have to learn how to articulate that the correct way. We have to learn how to just let somebody into our feelings. Um, it's often that when we're trying to express that feeling, that it comes off a different way. But if we can just tell someone how we're feeling first, that's a different type of thing. Telling someone and expressing the feeling is always going to be different. It's telling someone how you feel and trying to get them to know why you feel that way. And if you can get those two those two major things, how you feel and why you feel out that way, and actually have someone to receive that message, that's a big, that's a big, big leap right there. It's a big help. Yeah. So um, that's the key thing, though. One person being able to execute those two things and another person being able to just execute that one main thing and proceed. So it's three points and five points in that whole thing. Two people, one person hitting the two, the other person hitting the one. It's five right there. So if all five points hit, that's a big major hit, um, big major help, I should say. Um, and most communication, especially with me dealing with the, the, the issues I have mentally. So her being able to receive the message is just really, a, that, that really gives me what I need. Um. How can we support y'all? How can I, how can we be there for y'all this week? Yeah, man. How can we show up as as bros? I need to do the same thing, man. Be there. My homies and my friends. If I need y'all. If I pick up, pick up. That's true. I like it. If I pick up, pick up. Uh... Pick up, relay. Booyaka, booyaka. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. The whole song in my head <laughs> running. Cheetos, man. man. Yeah. <laughs> um, you said speed. What? Mosquito. Cheetos or speed? Mosquito. Oh shit. Those and fly. Um. But yeah, man, uh, the opposite of hell is heaven, and that's always a good thing. And another good thing is uh, let's go ahead and get into the show this week, make the positive black news. The news positive about black. the positive cool black. shit, the black people, dope shit, the wild shit, the crazy shit, the interesting, innovative, amazing, amazing shit that black people are doing, um, creating, being a part of, or just otherwise uh, experiencing this week. Um, and all of these stories this week are coming to us from BlackNews.com. Um, so let's get off into it, man. Our first story is uh, about an entrepreneur who is helping HBCU grads get hired for a STEM job open. It's now easier than ever for HBCU graduates to find well-paying tech jobs thanks to a new website called STEAM Jobs. STEAM, an acronym for science, technology, engineering, art, and math, represents up to 75% of the college degrees that HBCU, HBCU students are earning. However, job placement has been a challenge. According to Pew Research Center, Black and Hispanic workers remain underrepresented in the science, technology, engineering, and math or STEM workforce compared with their share of all workers, including in computing jobs, which have seen considerable growth in recent years. The same article reports that Black workers who comprise 11% of total employment across all occupations are 9% of STEM workers. As a former HBCU graduate myself, I understand how hard it can be to earn a degree and still struggle to find a decent job, says Dante Lee, creator of the website. I decided to create this website to easily allow employers at STEM-based companies to find qualified and diverse job candidates. The website, which is 100% free to use for students and job seekers, features more than 50,000 job openings from hundreds of companies with relevant positions in the country. It also includes job openings from various government agencies and reputable nonprofit organizations. So the name of the website is steamjobs.com. Uh, the app is Steam Jobs. Um, so look it up if you are in the STEM field, um, science, technolo science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, all you accountants out there, all you engineers, all you biologists, all you um, mechanical engineers, you, you technical people, like get out there, you IT professionals, coders, get out here, get with this. And uh, if you're struggling to get a job and you got the degree, you're just looking for the connection. Look into this, man. It's another opportunity for you. So it's called Steam Jobs, steamjobs.com. Or for uh, or if you want press inquiries, you can reach them at info at Steam Jobs. So shout out to Dante Lee for uh, facilitating that. that um, salute. Dope. Yes, yes. Salute to the king. Um, the next story we got is the Black Educator from Maryland wins $1 million in a global teacher prize. Keisha Thorpe, a high school teacher from PG County, Maryland, is the winner of $1 million 
Global Teacher Prize in 2021, mainly for her work in opening up college education for students who are underprivileged. The award was given by Varkey Foundation to Thorpe after being selected from over 8,000 nominations and applicants from 121 countries around the world. Thorpe, who teaches English at International High School Langley Park in Bladensburg, Maryland, completely redesigned the 12th grade curriculum for the department to make it culturally relevant for her students who are first generation Americans, immigrants, or refugees, mostly from Africa, the, the Middle East, the Caribbean, South and Central America, according to Global Teachers Prize website. Her efforts resulted to 40% increase in her students' reading, and she's also responsible for helping high school students gain fully funded scholarships. In fact, she helped seniors win $6.7 million in scholarships in 2018 to 2019. So uh, shout out to Queen Keisha Thorpe for her win, but even bigger than the money that she received, shout out to her for the work she's doing to get the, the privilege of... Uh, uh, students what they need to get to the next level in life and to reach for their dreams like I think the seed she's planting is going to pay way more dividends than that money like that's huge so shout out to Keisha Thorpe from Maryland appreciate your work queen the word our next story another queen coming to us about a black mom penning a book to raise awareness about childhood disability the adventures of mighty Manny written by Asada Oluwadari Oluwadare. Manny, Mighty Manny is a superhero unlike any other, any other. He's a toddler with special needs, with a cape of many colors. Manny finds the strength to do unusual things. According to the author, Manny was introduced as a way to give hope to families who have children with need. When my son Emmanuel spent just shy of 11 months in the NICU, we searched high and low for books that would spark hope in our seemingly hopeless situation, said Asada, the author while explaining why she decided to write a book about disabilities. I found nothing speaking to our child, a child whose doctors gave little to no chance for survival and even fewer prospects for fulfilling quality of life. She further added that there needs to be more awareness about the subject as there are countless other families lost in the shadows, quietly steering towards similar difficulties, quietly similar, steering through similar difficulties. There should be a conscious effort toward building knowledgeable communities filled with hope and compassion. And this is exactly what Mighty Manny is all about. Manny also has a coloring book, which was released separately as a part of the series. So shout out to the author, Asada Shakur. Uh, oh, Lord. <laughs> Not Asada. <laughs> uh, shout out to the author, mm -hmm. Queen Asada Oluwadare. Um, she's also known for leading Asada O, Inc., a consulting and coaching firm that supports women in leadership and business. Um, so shout out to her. The name of the book is The Adventures of Mighty Manny and the Mighty Manny Coloring Book. And they're both available on Amazon. Um, you can go to mannysvillage.org, mannysvillage.org. If you want to get more information about Manny, the book, or any of her um, children with special needs. Salute to her for bringing awareness of that. And salute. Yeah, and as the father, a child who's been diagnosed, definitely understand. So appreciate this big time. And I'm definitely a person who support this. As just appreciate. Um, big yeah. up to the black, uh, black books, uh, authors and creators out there. Yes, yeah, gives me inspiration. Of them, man. It's part of that steam thing, that arts, man. We need more representation in all of these areas. Get our voice heard. Um, and, and all the ways that our voice can be heard too, like all of our mm -hmm. stories and perspectives. Salute to her yeah. and like anybody else. That's, um, and last story of the night, man. Meet the founder of a black owned self-driving vehicle startup that mobilizes healthcare. Frederick Akpogini Ak is the founder of Jego Technologies Inc., a black owned designer and manufacturer of autonomous vehicle, including self-driving pods that make it easy to connect customers consumers with services and products on the go, and will open their crowdfunding campaign on Start Engine for micro angel investors to invest in the same playing field as venture. Jego also has a mobile platform where users will be able to discover businesses that provide high-end, high-demand services, such as flu testing, COVID testing, IV therapy, and that of other local business, which can be brought directly to their customers using the driverless Jego pod. Their patent pending flagship prototype that was designed by the founder, Jego himself. Jego is here to give entrepreneurs the space to compete and give service providers the mobility to serve without the burden of large fixed costs like rent, says Agbo, Agbo, Agbo Guinea. I'm going to just call him Jego. 
Mr. Jago, because uh, I'm killing his name. So Mr. Jago uh, <laughs> says he is a 2020 NASDAQ milestone makers program graduate who spent over 15 years in technology development and software. And this is supposed to lead to more money flowing in our communities as opposed to it flowing outwards to large corporations because we are just as tired of that normalcy. So with retail rapidly changing and COVID-19 shattering more than a million businesses, Jego is providing a new commerce infrastructure powered by autonomous pods, AKA shuttles, connected to an SAAS mobile platform. In the midst of the autonomous market being expected to reach 30, 367 billion globally by, two, by 2030, Jago has partnered with a local manufacturer to produce pods designed by Mr. Jago with an initial focus of putting the vehicles into the hands of healthcare providers within the next two years. So this dude got some self-driving like shuttle buses that healthcare people are going to be able to use thing. or that you can use as like a mobile office or like like a mobile clinic, like doing mobile COVID testing, mobile flu testing, mobile uh, diabetes, that, stuff, that type of thing. So that's dope. Um, again, yeah, that's pretty dope. I ain't, uh, if you get in on the ground floor early on this, if you're into investing, look into this, see what it's about. But it's called Jego Technologies, Inc. And the man name is Frederick Agpogini. And if you want more okay. information on it, go to hello at jegopods.com or jegopod.com that's j-e-j-o-p-o-d dot and that is the black news that you can use hope it inspires hope it, it, it gives you something to think about and hope it just you know brighten your week up as we are going into the next week um going into the week of thanks um and thank you for listening so yeah that is the positive black news that you can use and um I think it's that time. I'm going to slide it on the big face, my dad. Well, it's time for face the screen. Mm. Face the screen, face the screen, face the screen. This month. Ooh, what we going to argue about this week? This nigga better not say no mic. It better not be no mic. Better not be no mic on this shit this week. I know that. A B B C D F E H I J K Elemental P Q R S T U V W X and Y Z. What you know about the alphabet? Everybody hey, know about the alphabet. Everybody know my plays got goddamn flashes. Thank you, Joel Santos. We we see the pole was tied though. No homo. Yeah, it was tied from it was tied from that tied ass uh opinion. Exactly, great ass movie. Denzel's classic. One of Denzel's classics. Sorry, everybody knows it. But this week, we're talking about <clears throat> who? Mr. Larry Lawrence, if you want to call him. Fish burn. Oh, wouldn't the great, fish burn? Great, I great. burn rubber. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Don't talk about a daughter being a porn star. Um, yes. Oh, <laughs> Montana. Yes. But Mr. Fish Burns has been in the, Hershey in the <laughs> acting guild for decades upon decades upon decades upon decades. This man the nigga was in Pee Wee Herman. He was in shit before that. Yes, this man has been landed down on the TV screen, the big screen, and the stage. And you know uh, I love him because he made this, gaps in your teeth cool. <laughs> But this week, we're only talking about his movies and his top five movies, in my opinion, damn it. Once again, it's face the screen, so y'all gonna hear my damn opinion in my top five Larry, excuse me, Lawrence Fishburne movies. <laughs> now, this is Please have my, my, my favorite on, on the top. Now, this is not Come a on, specific face. order, no specific order, and I'll always have a few honorable mentions because with, once again, these, these heavy hitter black actors, they, their discographies are so lengthy. It's hard to choose just five, but here we go. Now, in this top five, we have higher learning. He's mm. a professor. Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams. There you go. Okay. That was a great role for him. Man. So far, so good. I'm, I'm not mad mm-hmm. at the performance. Um, it was the, the accent was a little off, but I'm going to give you that. I, I, I don't know what else you about to say, now, but okay. Uh-uh. Okay. Now, the next one, the, 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 I'm, I'm going to just throw a tie out there. This, he, he was in two franchises, one he's currently in, one he was in. And matter of fact, the other one's coming back too. So I couldn't decide between either one. Michael so Boyce? Out there. You got the Matrix. No, you got the Matrix franchise and you got the John Wick franchise. 
He was in John Wick. His act. Yep. Yes. Oh wow. Yes. See, that's the only I've seen that movie. He's, he's, a key, he's, he's a key. He's a key player in that. So I think both of them love that because each movie he's a key player, and I, I, I think like without him in each movie, the, the dynamic of each movie would have been different. Just not. I'm damn not sure rolling with John without Morris. him acting. Without him acting as that, that's why I said this new this new Matrix with him not being Morpheus. I don't know. I don't know because him playing Morpheus is it. <clears throat> that's why it that it put that role over and made that person and that role seem more significant than it, it truly may have been because Neo was the one, but Morpheus motherfuckers was in tune with Morpheus. You feel me? Like I, I would say this, was. man, and this is just a both at piano reads. This is just a sidebar for all face to screens. Can y'all stop taking our? Uh, classic movies or like classic performers and just like remaking the movie without like can y'all just leave some mm-hmm. shit alone like i feel you on like like mm-hmm. do like marvel did yeah, come up right. with a new concept and then just keep building off of that for years or or like you know but don't don't take our old shit and keep stop mm-hmm. leave me something damn it stop trying to stir it up and remix it now so hey, next i ain't Let's seen go. no remake of citizen kane ain't seen no new rosebud popping up I don't want to either. Lord Leave Fitzburg our shit alone. Portrayal and Buffy Johnson. Hoodlum. Great movie, man. Great, great movie. Hoodlum? You said Hoodlum? Yes. That is tears yes. approved. Uh, that, that, gets, that, that, yes. gets, that gets yes. three tears. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to show my that face. Gets three te- that Yo, gets three I, tears. I can watch that movie yeah. all One, day, two, every day, three, with no problem. Three tears faces. Yes, sir. Every we on the same page every day. day. Now, next one. Steve Cover. In the middle of little it. Mm. Oh, you talking about the movie. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Have, I gotta. I gotta go. How back many spots we got left? How many spots you got left? One more for five, top five. Oh, come on, man! He gonna do it again. <laughs> he do this to me every time, yo. He leave my fucking. Sh- oh. Now, now this one I still don't know because <laughs> I'm I'm still debating on this last one between what I have in the top five and what I want to put in the top five because I got three three other. Uh, uh, my honorable mentions could, could be right here in the top five too, but I'm gonna just pick off the whim and I'm gonna just say the last one is his portrayal of the boys in this. Movie. That's what I'm gonna say. He did it, there, folks. That's in my top five. He left, but he left now my, my favorite mentions. off the top five again, folks. He 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 he's out to get me. <laughs> now, ah! my honorable mentions. My honorable mentions is him and what's love got to do with it. Him yes. and King of him and King of New York. Oh my, that was it. Yes, I was like, "How you?" Oh, oh, that was the, that was my biggest. I, I was debating hard on that one. That, that, really oh. hard. That, that was that's my movie right there. Nigga. Um, him and corn, him and cornbread early in me. Okay, very very. <laughs> I knew you was very, very on cornbread early in me. <laughs> but I did. I bet you. I bet that's you. That's one of his shits, like the mighty queen, it. y'all. He be why he, he he grew up watching. I'm not surprised that the cornbread early. like niggas was young <laughs> as hell. This nigga was breaking out these old ass movies. Like, come on, let's sit, nigga. What? Oh, it's time to go to sleep, huh? All right. I guess. Must be tough, <laughs> isn't it? I guess it's time everybody go nah, nah. <laughs> Nigga was 11, 12 years old. You know how you had like sleepover, all the fellas come over and you order to play a video game. <laughs> and was, you know, everybody was putting in, you know, like action movies and funny movies and, you know, shit that preteens and teens like, this nigga, come on, I just cornbread early me. I need those 70 bark a think a bark a think a phone Like, what, nigga? I, I am a child. This is not appealing. <laughs> I'm a boy, damn it. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, the the cornbread early me, I'm not surprised. Last honorable mention is him and Othello. Okay, I didn't see Othello. That. I didn't see that movie. I, I heard really good. In- didn't he do like a, uh, the, the the stage play as well? Didn't he do both? I believe so. I, am, I, am I true? I believe so. I believe mm-hmm. so too. I, I, I'm yeah. not too upset with you. It, it's I'm, I'm not really sure. I, mean, I just want to say it so I can sound smart. <laughs> no, my last that 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 five that 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 number five was my biggest debate, man, because the honorable mentions were so close. So any one of them could have fell in that top five, but. If I had, like out of my favorite movie, out of the honorable mentions that couldn't get into the top five, would have to be King of New York because his his role in that it was he he fit that role so good. It was like he he did that role justice. He, he want, King of New York got me one into movie. gangster movie. Like I saw that before I saw like Juice and all that. I saw that first. So like that movie, like 
made me go back and get more into other movies that had come out around the same time or before. So like King of New York got a special place in my in my spirit. And I love Christopher Walken. I, I'm one of those. So yeah. There's one that, movie, that movie was dope. That, there's one movie with Lawrence Fishburne in it that y'all didn't bring up. That is a classic that I love to my to the dearest. School days. What's that? School days. Oh school shit. Days. School days is Damn right. that heat. School Damn days right. is that heat. School days Damn is right. that heat. Oh, that is that he. Oh, damn. Damn, yeah. I took that yeah. off. I took yeah. that off to put What's Love Got to Do With It. I think my top five would be What's Love Got to Do With It. King of New York would be just um, <laughs> Matrix, um, fourth and fifth. Hoodlum, and then mm-hmm. fifth one. What you just say, Pat? Uh, school days. <clears throat> school days. Those would be my top five. Now, me personally with Mr. Fishburne, Larry, if you want to, but I know he hates that shit. Um, yeah, he do. His earlier work compared to his later work, I like his earlier 90s, earlier 2000s work compared to his later 2000s. Um, I agree. I like, I, I, it's just like the Luther Vandross. I like skinny, You like Big Luther? Um, Larry. I, I like Skinny Larry compared to Larry. Before Fluffy Larry, yeah. If him, if him like, I like those movies. He, he was more skinny Curl movie. wasn't just if like him, Luther. Now, you feel me? I don't want to, and and just looking at his discography, I'm going to go ahead and say it. It may be an unpopular opinion, but I feel like Larry Fishburne might be the black Nicolas Cage. What? The black Nicolas Cage? He, can, he do got a lot of movies that don't nobody give a fuck about. Mm. Think about it. But he can act, though. Think. You know, like... That is the separating factor. Because no matter what he's in, <laughs> he's still Cage a good actor in it. It's in just some movies. Movie. Nicholas Cage can act like Nicholas Cage. If you don't tell her that that movie to kind of fit what he does, that should be looking weird as hell. Like that nigga was in the Wicker Man, and that is one of the weirdest portrayals. And I seen I mean, the original Wicker Man, so I'm like, fuck. This nigga just keep yelling and shit for no. What is you yelling about? Like this scene don't even call for you to be. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, what the fuck is you I yelling like, about? I like that movie. <laughs> Simmer down, like man. I'm ta- you scared of them tax, them tax people coming to you on sale or something. Ha, 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 ha. Oh my God. Ha. Like he was good. He good for certain roles that need that. But if it don't need that, he can't tell oh himself to like L- Lawrence can play, di- mold himself to different shit. Even if it's in a corny movie, his yeah. part will be well acted. He's going to be the best actor in the corny Yeah. Movie. By Nicholas Cage default. will be like, in, like, will be in like a good movie and fuck it up. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> like Ghost. Lawrence will be in a good movie yeah. and enhance it. Nick will fuck it up. Mm-hmm. Now they both have done some. It's like putting movies. Denzel. So in I good do Burger. see your parallel you know there. Like you, they do got a lot of. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Why did they do that? That came out where? Yeah. Oh, that was straight to yeah. DVD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, yeah. They got a lot of bullshit in they. <laughs> they got a lot of bullshit. <laughs> They do got a lot of bullshit. A lot of bullshit. A lot of bullshit. Of bullshit. You got to get them checks, man. At, you got to pay the bills. Because I pulled up his whole, I pulled up his full discography just to make sure I had my shit straight because I wanted to make sure I wanted to think he was in something and wanted stuff. So I went to the full discography. He got a bunch of shit, movies that like came out recently that I ain't never fucking heard about. Speaking of bad actors. Like who? Like, like what? Y'all remember when y'all, was talk, when y'all was talking about Belly 2 Game, the worst movie? You mm-hmm. know who was game before game? Tretch. Oh. Tretch got some shitty movies, boy. Oh, my God. Them, sh- them shits didn't even make it to DVD. They went straight to, like, Cinemax after 4 at the 4 a.m. Hey. Like, that shit that gets you right between their normal programming and the late-night weird sexual <laughs> shit. Like, they throw that shit like right USA, off. When, like, when everybody... Like, did, USA at 1 p.m. Right, like, when, like, when, like, like, when you didn't already... When you didn't already like got with your girl or skied it off and and you ain't quite ready to after, watch a real movie. Let me throw this on niggas going to sleep. Of, um, <laughs> after the re, rerun of Renegade when Antonio yeah. Banderas. Oh, and... Renegade! <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, that was, no, what was the name? Uh, L- and L- Lazama. L- Lazam. L- 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 yeah. Lorenzo Lamas. Um, Lorenzo Lamas. Lorenzo Lamas. Yes, that's, that's what it is. That's, yes. that's the USA <laughs> Antonio Banderas. <laughs> Renegade. Oh shit, nigga! I'm, just, I'm seeing the entrance to that show. That nigga riding in on the motorcycle. <laughs> is that a cactus? That's nigga riding through tumbleweed. <laughs> oh shit! 
But Tretch was the original game, yeah. yo, when it come to like bad movies, like and rappers coming out like these weird, like nigga, what the fuck I'm doing? And he Sometimes just fucked up all the it. progress that Ice T and um and Ice T, Ice Cube, uh, Tupac, all of these great performances <clears throat> that had started making headway. That nigga Tretch came through and shit on yo. all of that. Yeah, I think his name I is just, movie was I like just, bullet, bullet wounds, bulletproof, bulletproof heart, bullet, some stupid. So, yo, I just realized something. I've seen that shit a couple times. I just that's the worst it's, thing you ever want to see is fucking a nigga from Naughty by Nature doing kung fu moves in a suit. Oh. <laughs> huh, 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 huh. These slow ass blocks, <laughs> fuck out of here, nigga. nigga. Don't fight like that. If if Sticky Fingers. <laughs> If Sticky Fingers had more I, movies, he would be the Nicholas, the Black Nicholas Cage. No, because Nicholas Cage do got Sticky some movies. See, that's the thing. He got those movies where Hollering work for him. Like the original Ghost no, Rider, sure. I actually prefer that to the second. The um, what you call it? Uh, the first National, National Treasure ain't that bad. Treasure. You know what I mean? That's, that's I another think that's movie like he was in. I don't know. I think that might be my favorite Nicholas Nicholas Cage movie. Yeah, he got a couple of that movies that are decent. You know what I mean? But um. Uh, mm-hmm. He should never bring out the, the yeah, movie. Was sticky doing. fingers ain't got shit. That's it. All his movies is like yeah. you are now. Fredro Star, he got Sunset Park. So I roll with Sunset yeah, Park. What? what time? That might be man. a closer. Got to get live. It's time to represent Sunset Park. What time is it? It's time to get live. It's time to represent. That shit used to give me hype as fuck. And he was on Moesha. Yeah, he was. And I, he was I'm bad. sorry, we digress. I, I don't know how we got the sticky fingers in Fredro. The me. great Lawrence hey, Fishburne, that, but me, me. that's what happened. Battled, yeah. about the screen, Keith like, Murray. Here now. He battled Keith Murray. Yep, that's what that's who he battled. Did he lose? No, he I won because Keith Murray showed up like drunk or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it something yeah. like that? Yeah, something yeah. Like that. yeah. But yeah, mm. man, uh, it's just it's some it's some rap. Big facts. Um, what I do want to see facts. is Pod Squad. Y'all let us know. Let's voice message on Anchor. Leave us a, a comment on YouTube. Um, let us know what your top five Lawrence Fishburne movies are. Um, do you agree with Faces list? Are we right? Are we they wrong? What did you think? Did you agree with my list? What did y'all think? Give us your opinions. Um, last week with the Denzel, it was definitely some heated, some heated conversations on uh, TikTok or uh, <laughs> YouTube on all platforms. So please hit us up. Let us know what you think. And um, Mighty Queen, get a Mighty Queen too. Out yeah, here. that Mighty on, yeah, man, it, fuck all it. that, man. That Mighty Queen was some fuckery. The Mighty Queen was some fuckery. Mighty Queen too, Denzel. Fuck the Great Asian Debaters boy, was man. my movie though. I he like won. the Great. I ain't mad at the Great Debaters. I like Flight, but uh, yeah, do it for the culture. Do it for the culture, Denzel. Man, Mighty Queen too would be some super. And speaking of fuckery, mm-hmm. looking at my roller, it's about that time. Is it? It will be some good. It will be some. Oh. Is it? Not is it? It would be good. It's it's time, face. It's time, tis. I think it is. Oh shit! Well, my wife it's party time. Oh, hey, it's oh, party it's time. Party Having some fuckery. Come on. <laughs> it's time. It's time. <laughs> Okay, so people who are listening, you you gotta go over to YouTube. I would, I would never use this with y'all over to YouTube. I would let y'all go over to YouTube. Y'all gotta see. This fool came out with a fucking trumpet this week. Last week it was the guitar. He done made faces Wi-Fi freeze. Like, I I don't know what's happening no more at the beginning. Yo, <laughs> this nigga, this fool came on camera with a trumpet. Oh. Looking like he blowing the horns for the royal court or some. Sh- I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I quit. Time for the good and fucking oh red episode fifty two. Yeah. Oh my god. Fifty two of them. Thing. 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 I just be doing stuff just to see how y'all respond sometimes. <laughs> fifty two oh, of them. Man. Thing. 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 Fifty two. New fifty two. Actually, that's, New what, that's what you call two. DC Comics <laughs> universe. New 52. It's all 52. It's all first 52. Ooh. Right. Back Kick with a shoe. <clears throat> Go ahead and play them horns again, Pat. All right. We're going to play the damn horns again. We're going to play the damn horns again. Toot, 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 toot. Oh. 
<laughs> Boy. Thank God I got my backup oh. trumpeter. Boy, that shit sound like <laughs> that shit sound like 30 people fighting yeah. or some or a flock of geese. <laughs> oh my God. Why do you have a trumpet? Let's let's get to let's get to the main question. Here. All right, let's let's go through it. Okay, first of all, why do you have a an electric guitar and a trumpet? But you said you played drums as a kid. I am so confused as to what hap- what's happening in your room right now, bro. I have a collection of uh, assorted things. Uh, he in just my got random instruments in the past. I think I got to play it again. <laughs> instrument in this shit. I played the trumpet in high school, and I wasn't really good. Oh, work? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the French horn. Yo, I'm learning so they wanted much me about on the French that, horn because they had the good and fuckery else. is teaching me so much about you. So dang. I, it's, okay. It's a, it's a representative of myself. Good and fucker. Mixed in one. Let me shut up. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. All right. I'm I'm done. This it's two weeks in a row. I don't know what this nigga this nigga gonna bring out a Susan phone next week. I don't know what I'm gonna do next week, but maybe I uh, I don't know. I'll get like a uh a old you should pull out a, bottle. You should pull out a you should pull out a triangle or a mouth harp. <laughs> That's what that's that's what face said. He go. You should come out with a mouth heart like bound and bound and bound. Come in with a harmonica. I'm the only. Yeah. I'm the only motherfucker with a triangle. Triangle is mine. I'm gonna find me a cowbell. <laughs> cowbell. Yes. All right. More cowbell. My shit in the triangle. Ding ding. He ain't lying. This nigga talking about a ding. He ain't lying. Do do. Am I lying, bro? He's not lying. No, I remember you saying that one time. You was just playing the triangle and. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for you to ding. Yeah, he worked his way up to a drum, but he's yeah, he spent yeah, some time yeah. on that trying. Yeah, Sometimes you gotta start with the fries before you get to the start from the start from the, the fucking bottom. <laughs> That's when the real. <laughs> oh man, <clears throat> let's get it. Well, speaking of real bucks and people spending it, and uh, big bucks, big, big bucks. Come on with it. Uh. One of the big companies with big money or whatever about to pull out some moves this uh, Friday, and they had a whole Oprah game. Oprah Tyler Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah, we're close. It's in the movie realm, but Disney had Disney Plus Day, and they- Oh, yeah, buddy. They released- Oh, yeah, they released buddy. out a lot. We about to get some- We about to get some shit. Now- my, I'm gonna my, my, my Marvel released. fans, my Disney fans, we, we, we- It's about to be a good year. So I'm going to I'm I'm going to do like little summaries of what they actually going to pull out and I'm really going to talk about what I really want. So let's just fly through these cuz it's a lot. It's a lot. So Marvel Secret Invasion. This is going to be the one with not with Samuel L Jackson, Nick Fury, and if y'all seen it, it's old Nick Fury. He got a beard. He's not even using his eye patch. He got that know that they've been building for he this looked like he years. went through a lot. This has been coming with for a lot. Years. This is what uh, a lot of us wanted talk. after Infinity War anyway. So this is perfect. Oh. perfect. So Secret Invasion is based off, actually based off a comic book event in Marvel where it was already like scrolls impersonating prominent people throughout the popular. If you, you know, saw even had, Captain Marvel, uh, you understand what a scroll is, some shapeshift. Yeah, they're shape shit. Whatever. In the comic book realm, or in Captain Marvel, they seem more like refugees that were like enslaved or whatever, went through stuff. In the comic book realm, um, they're a ruthless alien race and they always butt head with the Kree. Nonetheless, or whatever, everybody was ended up being a scroll. We don't know what they're going to do with this or whatever. Quick comic book notes um, the scrolls try to take over Wakanda. And Black Panther went out and beat the biggest, strongest scroll out there. And they that happened. That happened in the comic book. Black okay. Panther's a bad man. <laughs> he is a bad, bad motherfucker, motherfucker, especially in the comics. He's yeah. a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Next one. Marvel Zombie. If y'all seen the what if episode or whatever, um, okay. there's a is is also based on a comic book event concept. There's a um alternate universe or whatever. And comprised of this pretty much like alien virus that turns people into zombies and all of your favorite marvel heroes turn into zombies fighting oh, each, fighting each other it, it's some crazy shit each each random story if you're into zombies or whatever you want to see your favorite marvel characters 
zombie form, Marvel zombies is coming. I'll take a zombie, I'll take a zombie <clears throat> Thor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Zombie Thor, zombie Hulk, mm. <laughs> zombie Galactus. Oh, no. Zombie Galactus. Yeah, Zombie, zombie Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> Thanos dead, so mm. he's good on him. Right yeah. now, I don't know what the most right now. I, I have a theory about that. Is he? Is he? Dead? I don't know. This we'll version. Get into that. We, that. We, we got we got two versions of him that are dead, and then we got a multiverse. I don't know. We have a multiverse. This is true. So, mm-hmm. so uh, let me get. Mm, it might be a different version of Thanos. It might be a Thanos that's a closely more related to the Thanos that's in the comic book that's like obsessed with Lady Death. Like that. That I wouldn't be like mad at crazy. that. I, I, I actually more comic leaning version mm-hmm. of the one that yeah, always so the next his plan. <laughs> so the next one is uh, Agatha House of Harkness. If y'all don't know who Agatha is, after watching Agatha WandaVision, started. I'm hyped for that. I, I would I would not yeah. have normally been hyped for that. I really didn't give a fuck she like that from. I ain't care, but WandaVision yeah, she, definitely got me hyped. I like the actress that plays her too. She, she yeah, like, she's real like quirky. Her. Yeah, and, and it. Agatha, uh, like Marvel is real good with getting their lesser known characters and making them have some type of importance in a mm-hmm. way or less or less popular characters or whatever. Because for, for example, nobody gave a fuck about Loki until Tom Hiddleston came along. Nobody gave a fuck about Loki. That's I never true. did. It's true. Thor was wrong. really the only I'm one I cared sure. about from that whole lineage. And mm-hmm. I only cared about him and it, when he became part of the event he crossed over. I cared about. Him. And then it's it's certain writers and in the movies that got me more into Thor because I thought Thor was corny too because he always spoke like he in some old Shakespearean drama or whatever. Like, have yeah. it thee, I shall spike thee with thine. I like what they've done. I like what they've done with MCU. But yeah, it makes them more relatable. Indeed, pretty much. Um, Next up is Ironheart. Uh, this is based on the combo character Ironheart, which is that uh, the daughter? Is, um, no, it's <clears throat> is a black girl by the name of Riri Williams that had, uh, I believe, in the comic books, she found an Iron Man helmet one day and made her own armor out of. Come on, black girl. Yeah, so boy, yeah, you can't yeah. stop a black it's woman's a, ingenuity, boy. <clears throat> she got. She got kind of a crucial um, backstory, or whatever, but I'll leave y'all into it or whatever to get into Iron Heart or whatever. That'll drive y'all to like read more um, black character comics. So, yes. Riri Williams, Iron Heart, that's coming up. Riri! Uh, so, for the kids, I am Groot. Groot has a cartoon. Damn, for the kids, for tears. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, Groot is my nigga, man. Groot, baby Groot, teenage Groot. I love Groot. Groot is my favorite, is, is like, in my top three favorite characters from the MC. So I am thrilled about this. So, so quick side yes. story about yeah. Groot. Hmm? Quick side story about Groot. So it was his teacher, right? And she assigned her students. Her, the assignment was to pick a Marvel character or your favorite comic book character and write an autobiography about him. Little man picked Groot. So being all he says, I'm Groot. The whole paper was on number, I'm Groot, I'm Groot, I'm Groot. I got an A. <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect, man. He committed. That's perfect. He, he, yep. committed. he did it right. I respect the hustle. I respect I the hustle. Committed. You got to laugh if nothing I'm else. Groot. You got to laugh. Like, shit. Got that, that, that's creative as hell. That's creative, boy. You got a few. <laughs> I like that. You got a future in comedy, right? Now, nice. shoot, he might end up being a millionaire, yo. The quickest way to get to your <clears throat> quickest, smartest, and simplest way to get to your goal. And he chose it the one way that nobody else thought of. <clears throat> yeah, I was, I was sleeping right there. I like language. that. Come on, group. Let's go, yep. group. So, uh, the next one up, we're going to bring, matter of fact, maybe I should. Yeah, we'll use the segue. The next one I, I'm going to bring up is uh, Echo. This is a new series. I think the it's going to be a spinoff of no, no. Oh, I was like, what? Well, <laughs> that was a hard game. No, this this is based off this um this Native American girl that was actually an assassin that was like I believe she worked for the Kingpin at first until she realized that he was or Native American assassin. You got me intrigued. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's what it's in. Uh, the adopted daughter of Kingpin or whatever. And you know, Kingpin from the comics, yeah, yes, the comics, Kingpin. 
I'm down. So she's like a daredevil, daredevil character mostly. <clears throat> so I need to learn more dope, about man. that daredevil world. Uh, I'm down. I'm like, down. To, I'm down to watch. <clears throat> like if you wanna, it's a whole nother like. I feel like Marvel is split in different worlds. Like, I hope they develop the it level. more now that they ain't got the Netflix. Yeah, <clears throat> I think. Uh, well, they got the same dude, um, the guy that's playing Daredevil in Netflix. They got him. I think they actually he has him um, shown in uh, No Way Home. Good. Oh, I want matter of fact, I want them. To I think he's still. I, th- I think he's still playing as Matt Murdock, but as far as I think they might be going somewhere else with Daredevil, but I'm not sure yet but I think he's still going to end up showing up as Daredevil. And from what I understood, I think they keep in the same guy who played Punish, uh, John okay. Burton. Burton I, I, can, I know it's John Burton something. Cool thing. Sounds like a plan to me. I was hoping they did so. But they, they got a street level at Marvel. They got the world of mutants. They got the world of like Big time global threats. Yeah, like and then I would say s- just global threats. That's yeah. the Avengers world. And you then got you got sword. the cosmic. <clears throat> and then they got the magic world. Yeah. So yeah. it's all split up. And everybody so speak connected through the multiverse. Speaking of that, multiverse, what if season two is always coming up? Okay. Now is multiverse is is what if canon? Like is are those <clears throat> things things that could happen or are those things that we're <clears throat> supposed to take that are happening in different universes? Uh how we're is taking that working? That as, how say when it comes to the multiverse is not canon in the main cinematic universe that's all i need to know yes no those are just alternate realities so alternate realities are never really canon unless you're just talking about what's going on in that alternate reality yeah i mean like is that really happening in, in that alternate universe parallel to what's happening in the main universe Yes, like while everything... Wanda, like while Wanda's doing her thing <laughs> on the Earth that we consider, say Earth six one six, right? Mm-hmm. In this other Earth twenty five thirty, is the Watcher really doing all of this? Is 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 uh what is it? Ultra Vision really happening? <clears throat> is all of that really going on? And was that like, oh, this is a possibility of what could happen due to the multiverse split? As far as the marvel cinematic universe multiverse that those things are happening in that how say marvel cinematic multi so they are Mar- canon marvel cinematic multiverse so in the, in, the, in the same as world as that we watch loki books, in in the same no i don't think the com- i don't take the yeah, comic books as yeah into the marvel system. i take a, i think of them as two separate worlds. and yeah, i'm mainly these, invested all in all these the things MCU. are happening because if you if you watched spoiler alert if you watch the end of loki or whatever this is how they can have these shows still tie in it because kevin feige wants everything to tie in some type of way yeah so if we don't have shows that like at least give you a glimpse of the marvel cinematic Universe, like the multiverse i should say or whatever then it's not really existing like like you you don't have nothing to go off of like you just know it's a multiverse out there you don't have a visual representation, but that's what what if is for. Yeah, I just wanted to see if I just wanted to make sure I, when I'm watching mm-hmm. what if possibility or yeah, so now it's I, a possibility. Now I'm on the same yeah. page. So it's a possibility. It's not really having canon. To, so if the characters from the cinematic universe cross over into the what if world at some point, could they go into a different stream or a different timeline? <laughs> they would not experience the repercussions of these things. Yeah, it's not like they're going to go into that universe and they just change into that version of that. No, it, they might go into that universe and they might see the exact, um, they might see that universe version of themselves, pretty much. So they, I'll, I'll put it, you have, you yeah. have the main, you have the main universe and everything in the what if universe, the what if um show is just, other alternate universes it's that's what i'm saying yeah yeah so so when i'm watching it it's canon which means to me if a character from like if a character from loki right Mm -hmm. did one of them time jumps or whatever and they end up now that the timeline is unraveled and they end up in this alternate universe where the the watcher just finished doing this against ultra vision and all that shit Mm -hmm. would would the person coming from that loki show would they see the repercussions of what happened in that universe from that 
because they're now in that timeline? Or would that not even have happened because that's not canon? That's all I'm trying to think. No, it just just treat everything as that's that's canon. It's a possibility, but it's canon because we got to show you different um different different possible um, different multiverses and different possibilities of the multiverse or whatever because if we don't have anything to show then nothing really ex exists it's like i feel like what if is all right we have all these crazy examples crazy ideas from the comic book world how can we put it into the marvel cinematic universe and it makes sense we got to make a multiverse so what if um, is basically saying, hey, there's all these other possibilities in the multiverse or whatever. They don't okay, directly... Okay, so yes, it is canon. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it doesn't it directly is. affect the cinematic timeline that we normally watch with the movie. Well, I wouldn't expect it to unless <clears throat> one of the characters from that universe came over into the universe. Come over. I, I understand yeah. that part, but it is canon. Yeah. So now that makes sense. It is canon. So that's all I yeah. needed to understand because that's how I wrap okay. my head around it. Like, I overextend it. I care. <laughs> over, okay. Overexplaining it. Now I got you. Overexplaining it. But yeah, that's why I feel like what if it is, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's like uh, they had to figure out a way. We got all these crazy ideas in Marvel yeah. that we want to do. So we got to find a way to make it make sense or whatever. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the fans, the fans want Marvel zombies, but it wouldn't make any sense to just randomly make a movie about Marvel's. This is true. But we put it out as a cartoon, as a little episode. Then we have a whole series about it. If they like the series too much, we might actually make a movie and people will go to it. All right. Here or there. Let me hurry up and go through these because what I really want to talk about is almost um there's Ms. Marvel. Ms. Marvel is a uh, stretchy girl. Yeah, she's um she's an inhuman, <laughs> bit of a shapeshifter. She got a whole bunch of um other characters, uh other um like powers that she figures out along the way. Um her name's Kamala Khan and she has like a Middle Eastern background, pretty much. And her like, like her role model is Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers from the movie. So they're gonna play off that. And the next one. Is um She Hulk that's coming okay. out soon? Half uh, is that why the Hulk is not the Hulk no more? Bruce? Um, no, it's not one of them. But he they're gonna have um they're gonna have Smart Hulk on the show okay. or whatever. And the gist of it is something happened with Jessica Walters. That's um uh, that's Bruce Banner's cousin, pretty much. She's a regular lawyer. They had to do a blood transfusion, and then that's how she ends up being so. And there's some rumors about Meg the Stallion being on the show. Some I, I don't know yet because I ain't seen it in the trailer, but it, it's pretty cool. Okay. Um, the yeah, next one make, is Meg the Stallion got that hottie sauce at Popeyes. <laughs> Y'all know how uh, Pat feel about Meg. You got it, man. You got you got to protect your knees, man. You got to protect your knees. You can't be, you can't be out here styling profile with ashy knees, especially as if you're a woman and everything. What? Mm. What you could say a lot, you, you could learn a lot from somebody who has fucked up. Like, you might not want to. I bet you could. Yes, sir. I bet you. <laughs> I, I don't know where we going with this. <laughs> you brought it up. You brought it up. I just <laughs> you. so, uh, after Miss Marvel, <laughs> since you, since you said he, he, from the moonwalker to moon night, <laughs> I'm hyped about that. Yeah, that's that's gonna be kind of crazy. That um, in the sun, bottom line. Um, well, the dude Oscar Isaacs is playing um, the guy that's Mark Spector, who's Moon Knight, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. And he he's the guy that played Apocalypse in X Men Apocalypse. Yes, he whatever. is. And um, Moon Knight is basically a crazy Batman, Batman with multiple personalities, and he gets the powers from an Egyptian moon god. Yep, of vengeance. Is yeah, he's he's fucking crazy. Yeah, you don't know if he he don't know. If he's well, Moon Knight, from what I'm thinking, is, yeah, I think that's what they're gonna come he at. Like he's gonna pick up one song. day. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm interested to see where they're gonna go with it because I was not like, ever expecting in my life to ever. It's gonna be see like a superhero split. TV show. Yeah, yeah. I but with less so. personality. Um, it's another somewhat like um uh, kind of a Jekyll Hyde with without mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. yeah. We have the, the mm. transformation yeah. and everything. 
Now, um, amongst all that, none of these bear up me more joy than the next one that got me that I'm about to bring up, bring up here. X Men '97. They what are bringing that? back. Is that the cartoon? They're bringing back. Yes, they're bringing <sighs> back the old X Men, the animated series, a continuing uh, seasons after it. Hence Ooh! <clears throat> yes, that's right. Disney is rebooting the 90s X-Men series. They're calling it X-Men 97. They're using the same animation style. They're picking off or where they originally left off. And yes, they're bringing back the thing. Yo, I'm hype. I'm hype. <laughs> I will punch got- a hole in this TV if it won't matter. <clears throat> oh my God. Now, Yo, that's dope. They still got that's the dope. struggle because some of the, um, the guy that played Cyclops and the guy that played Magneto, they just passed. Matter of fact, yeah, I don't dude, give a I ain't, played, I don't, played I ain't, man, just they, they, passed. man, you done made my movie. <clears throat> but the dude oh, that played man, that's um, Wolverine, he's already signed up to play Wolverine again. Let's go. <laughs> it's about to be so, some claw yeah, that, banging, baby. Let's go, Wolvie. I hope they got the original nah, saber too, <clears throat> Juggernaut back too. Man, that crazy. used to be my but, shit, boy. And I hope they upgrade Jubilee's powers too. The fire fuck out of here. <laughs> in the comic show. book, she she was a vampire. And then yeah, she in the comic back. book, she was raw. So damn TV show. <laughs> bloom, bloom. Unless we celebrate, we don't need. You. We need something to chase after the the yeah. Sentinels to chase after. Ooh, and then Mister Sent Mister Sinister. Oh, this shit about to be crazy, nigga. They can't morph on there. Omega oh. Red. Oh. Omega Red. Omega Red was the dude. Yo. Oh, well, I'm- Oh still, man! Still oh oh man! And one, one on the cartoon, <clears throat> didn't he have instead of uh carbonadium, one that like adamantium too, or something like that? Or am I no, making it was that carbonadium? Up? Okay, he he oh, had he had carbonadium. Like carbonadium is like the the poor man's adamantium. Yeah, it's like a step Russia below that in vibranium. It's like <clears throat> the knockoff. So, we ain't quite get it right, but here you can beat still. Yeah, he true, true. <laughs> yeah, and but he still had a problem. <laughs> Wolverine was through it. Yeah, he did. But Wolverine was that dude on that. Oh my! Oh, this shit got me hyped. Sh- a short Wolverine again. Oh, yeah, yeah. A real size Wolverine instead of this tall. Mother- he cut um he cut Juggernaut money bags and they jumped in front of him. You know what they say? A fool yeah. in his money. Yeah. And then he grabbed. Then they yeah, Juggernaut but... grabbed him and threw him. That's funny. <clears throat> Gambit. Oh my oh, God. Gambit. Gambit was so raw on that show, yo. <clears throat> Gambit was that guy on that show, yo. Like he was probably the coolest one on the show. He was probably yes, he was probably the coolest one on that show to me. He had me throwing cards all around my damn room, fucking up good bicycle. (laughs) Trying to find all the longest coat you can find. (laughs) The longest coat you can find somewhere. Boy, get to see trench coat. Nigga made trench coat cool. We could get we could get to see uh, Rogue back smack him off of him so he won't lose his powers trying to kiss him. See Rogue punch somebody through. Man, we seen Rogue punch through a lot see, of Worf walls. versus Mystique. That, you Mystique. know, they never that really used him. Like, back in the back in the cartoon, we used to get that. We yeah. used to get that face off. They are shape shifted oh. against ours. But you know what? Mm-hmm. The, they made they really made more to fit like the storyline of the show. Like really, there was like you know more of you seen them in the beginning of the season, and you didn't see them to the next season. Cause he was he always probably... shape shifting as somebody else. Yeah, and Mr. I remember Sonic he used to. Guy. I remember he used to always be either used by <laughs> the bad guys to like shape shift into somebody to infiltrate, or he would have some like weird double agent plot where he was like doing some shit he won't supposed to be doing. And yeah, but he was always somebody else. I remember that. It was yeah. it was and rare then, he yeah. made it through a whole episode where he was actually like looking like him. And yeah. Miss and uh, Mister Sinister. So. This is very that's much true. <clears throat> that second yeah, season, Mister Sinister was was raw as shit in that. I remember when they well, went to that alley. <clears throat> What'd you say, Faith? Yeah, that one of my favorite. Oh, that that's that's dope. I'm glad that I was. I, oh, that's <clears throat> that's huge. I, I'm glad I got Disney Plus. Yeah, man, it feels like my whole my whole childhood is back. Yes, it was like I used to watch X Men was my favorite. I used to play Wu Tang while watching X Men, and now Wu Tang Hulu. That. It's on Hulu, and I got the cartoon back. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Is, I'm very excited. Uh, <clears throat> X-Men, and uh, it was this show. I think it was called Cops, but it was like the little police dude, the black, even all of them had like these little gadgets. Oh, yeah, it was shit. Cops. 
Yeah, we brought this up before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but that, that and that X Men was like my, my the two cartoons mm. I had to see in the morning when I was real little. It was mm. Silverhawks too, but them was like the two Saturday morning won't Saturday morning if I missed them too. Yeah, you know, like some American yeah. Gladiator. I'd be pissed though. <laughs> I'd be pissed and I I'll cut on it. I'll wake up too late and I cut on the TV and say by the bells on. What? <laughs> yes. Missed that yes. damn thing. <clears throat> All right. Well, it was one more. Oh, yeah. We got one more. So mm-hmm. Spider-Man has always been, before the movie stuff, has basically been Marvel's mascot. And uh, they're coming out with another Spider-Man. Spider-Man cartoon. Um, hey. Spider-Man freshman year. So, okay. Which so is this a continuation of the cartoon or a continuation of this? Like, what is this fit? That's what I'm trying to figure out. But I think this is more. I think it's more. It's just a a cartoon because they really haven't put out anything else about it other than they just going to come out with a new uh, Spider-Man cartoon called Freshman Year, and it fits with like the the aesthetics of like all the other current Spider-Man cartoons because it's like, or Spider-Man movies like Homecoming, No Way Home and stuff like that. And uh, speaking of, speaking of Spider-Man, and since I said it, No Way Home, they just dropped the second trailer before we started recording today, guys. And it got everybody in it. Well, they don't got everybody in it, but villain wise, it basically just straight up. Like the Sinister Six? The plot. Sandman. Dr. The, the same one from the uh, old movie? I ain't really see it. I just saw him in sand form, but it looks pretty much like him. Is it the same we Doc Ock? Electro. Same Doc Ock. Same Electro? Same Electro. Hold same on, Jamie Green Fox Goblin. is entering the MCU. Yes, he says, I, you're not taking this back from me. Boy, we about to get into this it. Is, <clears throat> they messed up. They messed up the spell. Uh, the, to make sure that nobody, um, well, you know that, um, at the end of the last movie, everybody found out that Peter Parker is. I've not seen and, none of the new Spider Man, not one. Oh God! Except for the very first one, I haven't seen Far From Home, No Way Home, I'm Going Home. Well, I did, I not spoil Ran away it, from but home. I ain't seen none of them. If you go ahead, tell me that's cool. If you own it, if you watch the new one, you, you're going to get spoiled anyway. Well, but I'm coming at the to see end, the new one. They mysterious set, Mysterio set him up. And made As the it murder. seem like he was a killer. Yeah. Right. So right. everybody knows he's Spider Man. He's about to go through trial. He goes to Doctor Strange to pull up a spell so everybody forgets. He don't want everybody to forget because his best time was when Mary Jane finds out. Pretty pretty much, he gets all antsy. They fuck up the spell, and then because he fuck up the spell, motherfuckers for different universes, different Spider Man universes are coming out in this. And the kick is, they say that each one of these villains were somehow, maybe directly or indirectly, their death was involved by Spider-Man. Question. And he gets to get... Mm-hmm. Anybody else from the... Uh, any other heroes from the MCU going to be joining this one? Is he alone fighting? We don't Ooh. know. We don't oh, know. Shit. They didn't tell us yet. But oh, this would be a great what? opportunity if the rumors are true. To introduce the Spider Verse, if they bring back the other two Spider Men, come on, Miles. This is a great impetu, like a great opportunity to bring in the Spider Verse. It would be kind of fire. Toby McGuire better not but, do no dancing or snapping. No, I would kick his ass. But I think this is just a precursor for Doctor Strange mo- multiverse, Mad- of um, multiverse of Madness or whatever, mm-hmm. because that last part of that trailer, it looks like it kind of looked like the last part of Loki in the city. So when y'all get a chance, look at the trailer or whatever. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry. I'm really hype about that dang movie. So I just, Electro, Electro, Jamie Foxx, Electro, Jamie Fox is Spider-Man 2, Oct- uh, um, Dr. Octopus, well, um, Molina. The Green Goblin is Molina. even a big move. That, that's, <clears throat> yes, Green that's Goblin, one of the, better the same one. Movies. And Sam, that's just. The only, thing, the only thing they didn't bring in was Venom, but you know they couldn't. No, do that. they did though. They remember at the end of the, at the end of Venom when he wakes up and they're talking about Spider Man, mm. they Jonah see, Jameson and shit. So they might that might see, be their same way to, to like merge that. Yeah, and, and then you since also they, look since at they the don't, Mobius. since they not gonna bring back, I doubt they are gonna bring the Eddie Brock version. So like in the. The Mobius trailer, he he's kind of like in all like those we're gearing up to too. some shit, man. It's, oh, <clears throat> I was I was so like you know I had 
I had the heartbreak after the end of uh, Endgame, obviously. Yeah, like, like a lot of Marvel next? people that had drawn, like, oh, I don't really want to see what's next. I just want to do more of that again. I miss them. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, like, I've been kind of binge watching a lot of the, the, the series and stuff, kind of gearing myself up to it. I still got to watch Shang-Chi. Um, but I've been kind of getting more into it again. <laughs> so, like, I'm getting hype again. Yeah, this is mm-hmm. the feeling I had when, when I first saw Nick Fury uh, start talking about Avengers and this shit. Like, this is what we this is what we looking for. All right. So now that you brought up Shang Chi, that's the next next thing I was. I finally saw Shang Chi in Eternals, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to give y'all too many spoilers. But oh, you finally saw both of them. <laughs> I finally saw both of them. Um, between Shang Chi and Eternals, I like them both, but I like Shang Chi more. Okay. Shang Chi is more action more in your face i'm gonna give you like 50 punches and bow you know in the face with a lot of crazy mystical stuff or whatever um and it's like its own complete story whatever but like i really wasn't looking at it like a marvel movie so i think that's another reason why i kind of liked it i i kind of just looked at it like a straight up kung fu movie gotcha period so like i don't know I just it it just helps that it sprinkles a little bit of Marvel in there, especially especially the end credits and yeah, especially the end credits at the end. It kind of opens up or whatever. So I'm not gonna say too much. I just know that it shows that a, another another prominent uh, character is coming in Marvel without actually showing it. Galactus? I don't no nah, street level in Shang Chi. It's in well, no, no, actually, that was Eternals. Eternals, that was somebody that was um still that was somebody street level, but the guy's coming pretty much. And uh I'm excited. Pause. I'm excited. Pause. Very much so pause. Very <laughs> much so pause. God, jeez. Anyway, Shang-Chi was dope, action pack. Um uh Eternals was dope. You don't um I would say if you a Marvel head and you're really into the universe or whatever, you will enjoy them both or whatever, and you you enjoy Eternals more for the world and universe building more than anything because they it's a lot of talk, but it's yeah, still a I'm, good. I'm, I'm I'm on shit like that's I'm, so I like gotta see both extra extra cosmic yeah. science yeah craziness make me, think. Make me use whatever. my brain I love that mm-hmm. shit mm-hmm. so yeah that is um. That was pretty much the end of my um nerd talk for the good part of the good and fuck real whatever. No, you gave us some um, good good. Yeah. I got some more good on the music side. Now. Respect. Mm-hmm. So the verses, there's new verses coming out, and it's Shaka Khan versus Stephanie Mills. And then the end they're talking about Bone Thugs versus 36 Mafia. Oh shit. I, I respect to the Queens. I love Shaka, love Steph, but um that bone thug three six mafia. I'm ready to I'm ready to go. That's a lot of good music in one spot. Oh man, that's a lot of good music from my era that I grew up listening to personally. So like, yeah, I'm with that. I'm, I'm team three six. I'm just let y'all know right now. I'm team three six. I'm team three six. Got way too many memories for three six. I'm torn. I'm torn. It's gonna be it's gonna <clears> depend <throat> on the moment because I really like both of their catalogs. Yeah, but and they both got some like, songs that I love. Man. Like Bone Thugs got hip hop classics that like people all over. They got some big. No, they got shit that you gonna you gonna watch a movie one day and the next thing you know it's the first of the month. Wake up, yeah. wake up. You gonna watch a movie one day and be like, meet you at the crossroads. You yeah. gonna be you gonna you gonna see that three six three six. I know three six better play. Uh, I know they better play fucking ass and titties. Yeah, that yeah. song. You that beat that beat. And we run it. Yeah, yeah. We run that hypnotized yeah, minds album. That that shit was full of some beats, boy. God damn, we used to ride to that shit but so hard in high school. The the thing is, it's gonna be, it's gonna definitely be hits versus catalog because the catalog of three six. Uh, Bone Thug got some shit though. Like, Mo Thug album. And, uh, <clears throat> they got some. Mm-hmm. They got some shit. But they gotta play the shit with. I know. Parts. I'm saying they got. Yeah, they definitely do. <laughs> Tupac and Bone, and you know they're gonna play big. You know, oh yeah, Notorious Thugs is a guarantee. You got to. It's a guarantee. You 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 got to. But like 
uh, 3 6, man. It's just like, I'm not like, to me, I feel like the obvious is, is going to be Bone Thugs, but I'm, I'm saying Bone Thugs going to have a hard uh, day. Like, they're going to have a long day trying to fight this off. If 3 it's 6 gonna be, is it's like gonna be a organized concert you know, for me, I'm going to love it all, every moment. Of- that's that's and, too... and, they, and they still making music. When is this coming yeah, out though? Because like, they, you know, they like to sneak them shits in, and then I wake up the next morning, everybody got a reaction to it, and I'm fig- finding out they went down from everybody else. Yeah, I want to actually they be, watch this. They shit. be having them. When is they be having them on? The, um, no, nah, I haven't seen okay. it yet because they they haven't like put like a real date just yet. They just like agreed to it so far from okay. what I'm seeing, and keep us posted on that, Pat. Oh, matter of fact, no, it's been updated. No, I just don't, I don't keep you posted right now. They just updated. Okay. December 2nd, Los Angeles. Ooh, yes, sir. In my birth month. Let's they go. Just Come on, December. Yeah, December 2nd. I right. will be watching that. I don't know what else. I don't even know what day of the week that is, but whatever else is going on that day is canceled. I'm watching that. That is, yeah, to watch like a fucking, I'm about to fan out that night. I'm That's a Thursday. Be, it's a Thursday. I'm all It's shit. a Thursday. That's going to be Definitely perfect. Definitely a Thursday. I have to work to get hyped too. Yep. Yeah, I like it. 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 Oh, next, next on the music news. Y'all, y'all know Snoop is an executive of Def Jam. I, know I, I did not. It up before. I did not. Yeah. Um. First, her rumors about it. You know, he got his. He's coming out with that album. I think he already came out with that. I've know. I've been seeing uh, him doing algorithm. interviews with them silk rap. So I know he was gearing up for something. Yeah. But I didn't know what it was. I wasn't really because he's always doing. It. Yeah. So he um. He brought out algorithm. He got this song up there with like called Murder Music. He's just doing the hook, but it's Benny the Busher, Jada Kiss, and Busta Rhymes actually saying the rhymes. I was so mad because I was it's like, a nice collection I really of MCs. to hear. Yeah. And, and I was like, I was mad because it's Snoop song. And I really wanted to hear Snoop just rap. Like it might not have been as like as entry. I just wanted to hear him rap, but he did the hook. And I think he was just displaying. MCs pretty much, but he's also um CEO. Well, not see, he's also a cultural executive. He made up some new, like, like new um position, pretty much. Mm-hmm. But in his new position, he uh he was interviewed by Joe Rogan, and right there on Joe Rogan, he was like, I'm just letting y'all know right now, I just signed somebody to Def Jam, and that's Benny the Butcher. Mm. Joe Rogan don't know shit about <laughs> Benny the Butcher. That's different. But yeah, Benny Butcher finally got his first major deal. And I feel like he fits for Def Jam because he gives me a Jay-Z-esque vibe or whatever. But it feels Ooh, weird. Buddy, 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 buddy. Come on. I know that's your boy. Podcast, I know that's your boy. I'm just talking about. No, no. I'm just we talking about move on if from his there. last. Mm-hmm. I'm just talking about his, his uh-huh. beat selection. Uh-huh. And content mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. like i'm saying that it's a whack rapper saying this man mm-hmm. but anyway uh yeah benny butcher got his n- new deal through def jam and i just thought it was weird that it's snoop dogg that signed him it's weird snoop dogg also says that he should he should run De- death row like just put that out there and it should run death row I'm and not i feel mad like at that. he's probably he's probably that. the best one for that yeah i'm not mad at that thought oh. I, I could see that that actually um, makes a lot of sense. Way, way more sense. Way a lot. Um, so next thing I really want to talk about, man. Have y'all heard Silk Sonic? An evening with Silk Sonic with um Bruno Mars and Anderson Park? Like their album? Yes, the album. Yes, I've heard their whole album. Yes. And I heard uh Bru- uh Anderson Park when he was with the original band. That's their band before mm-hmm. he was before he was solo. So yes, I've heard sonically amazing. Oh my god. It's yes. pretty, it's pretty classic. It's one of them ones. It's one yeah. of them ones. Like if you like yeah, music man. and like real music, like music, 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 like instrumentation to the melodies Perfect. they chose to like the um the vocalization, like everything on this yeah. shit is is fire. Like they they put that shit together. Like they made one of them like ones. kudos to the engineer and the mixer, or whatever, because the way oh man, the way and they blended Anderson Pac. And Bruno Mars' voices together is like nobody overshadows the other one. They are perfect, like sure, uh, or oh, oh, whatever. On certain parts, each part they have their own shining, but or oh, whatever. But 
yo, that that album is that's a perfect album. I'm Agreed. not gonna lie. It's not too long. It's only like nine nine tracks, but it, within those nine tracks, you you get so many different changes and arrangements or whatever that you know. Agree. Like, it, it's it's not getting you. You're not gonna be bored from it. Pretty much. That, that was a, <laughs> that shit had you tongue tied. Yeah, man, that was a great album, man. I ain't lie. I was playing it all night. But um, the what's my favorite two um songs is oh, it's after after late night mm-hmm. after last night. That was my favorite. That's got uh Thundercats out there and smoking out the window. Thundercat. That's my shit. That's my shit. Smoking out the window. When he said it got the badass kids running around like it's Chuck E. Cheese, I was like, that is a bar. <laughs> they do be running around. Uh, yeah, I've taken the sun to, uh, and it does get a little bit of, uh, yeah, it oh, get yeah. a little rowdy. Yeah. In there. A little Guys, rowdy. they got some, the ladies got Summer Walker, we got Silk Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely on, um, I'm on Skate and Put mm-hmm. on a Smile. Oh, Put on a Smile is yes. that, that was real. Yeah. That was real. That's a real song right there. I, I could see, I totally understand why you feel that song. Yeah. 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 But, that was real life yeah, right Good there. album in for sure. A hundred percent. Face, have you heard it yet? I think Face would like it. That I feel like Face, it'll be right up your album you as far as like love, some random grooving music. You would love this jump, man. Like you would you be someone who would roll appreciate up your blunts. Roll up your blunts. Like you're gonna and feel young that vibe. Snappers like, wouldn't get it, but you would definitely get it. Like you would you would listen to it and be like, okay, I can Yeah. It, it got Bootsy up there. You got the Bootsy and, and I could I could tell Bootsy Bootsy gave him um a bit of like influence on certain parts or whatever the of the music. If you I play could, like I can get guitar, that. you or any music that involves funk. You have been influenced by. He is one of those architects that's like you can't get around it because he played his sound between him between Parliament and the Rubber Band. Like it, it's mm-hmm. yeah, it's no getting around. I, it's a lot of one of them I ones. Think on it, I think was the was the part. Um, on af- after last night, I hear a little Bootsy in there and Flyers Me. I, well, Flyers Me, I feel like Anderson Pop wanted to rap <laughs> on that one. And that's why I feel. Yeah. But yeah, um, definitely face. When you get a little, when you get a chance to have a little smoke ride, get that Silk Sonic. You you gonna? It's the same same way I felt with um, Life of the Party or whatever with uh, Andre and and Kanye. Speaking of which, they re released that and Kanye got a new verse and it fits the song. It's not a Drake this and I'm gonna be it checking that fits. out. It's I'm a, going to check that the out. Song. Yep, I, I added that song on all my playlists so it could just randomly pop up on my. On my shuffle or whatever, like, oh yeah, that's my song. And it yeah, and I'm glad they put it out because I'm tired of going on YouTube trying to find a song or whatever. I can just go <laughs> to my normal DSPs and just find a song and play it, man. They don't know what you thinking right now when he got me weak, right? Now. <laughs> <Just laughing>. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta go. I don't even know what he's thinking, man, but I know it's wrong. Oh, I do. <laughs> I know what he did. <laughs> Tecumseh. All right, y'all. All right, go ahead, man. I got goddamn Tecumseh. <laughs> goddamn Tecumseh, man. All right. Well, uh, that's all of the good from the good and fuckery. Let's get right into the fuckery. Um, Fucker and shine. So... As y'all know, Kanye came out with the second, um, the second interview. Uh, well, actually, I would say Nori and Dream Chaps came out with the second interview with Kanye or whatever, and still a little heated from the comments of um, of uh, Ye about his uh, lyrical ability or whatever. Uh, Talib Kweli start trolling by posting all of Ye's Ghost Riders, and Valid. Valid. and let me tell y'all something. I am not going to disrespect respect Talib Kweli's lyrical abilities. He he has, he can say some shit, and he has he he got a deep message with him every single time. In this day and age, displaying your ghostwriters, and everybody know he got ghostwriters, and ain't going to do but so much. Like yeah, you you put your point out there, but the only people that's going to really care is the people around Talib and the extra hippity hop boom bap. 
Talib. Everybody got to write their rhymes. <laughs> the way you keep saying his name, Talib. I could never know how to pronounce Talib his name, Kuali. Man. Talib Kuali. Talib, the one that sticks to you. Okay. I got to say the line where you say it's like, it's stick like, to the it's rib. Like, just say. Yeah, it's like rib, but lib. Rib. Ad lib. Yeah. Lib. Talib Kuali. Lib. Talib Kuali. Uh, every time I read it, it just come out Talib. Quali, because to me it's supposed to rhyme with Quali, but it's Talib. You mean Talib never stick to your ribs? I mean, he should have just came out as Talib. It would have been easier for me. <laughs> what? It like he had, Talib. like he was, oh, I think when I, like his parents was like, hmm, we name our child. Mm. Y'all think Pat gonna like this? He gonna be able to say this right? What y'all know. think? Let's call Pat. They won't think about you, nigga. That's what they should have did. They should have called you. You weren't born. He's older than us. What the fuck? The multiverse is real. They won't think about you. <laughs> He's a multiverse. And they won't think about you over there either. That's why his name is still Talib. Talib Kwali. Oh. Oh. I ain't gonna lie, yo. Is he the Kwali or Kwali? I can't I can't be mad at Ye for feeling the way he feel about Talib because I can't listen to Talib. Like, his voice. You know how it's certain... You I know how I am about rappers and their voice. Like, you said what? I'm biased. I, I, I'm... Like most deaf, I like common. I like, I mean, no, they're not black stars, most deaf and Tyler or whatever. But it's just sometimes, I don't know, it's just his voice sometimes. It annoys, except the blast, that song they got with high tech. I like that song. Yes. Blast. He got, it's still certain songs that, like, as far as Talib, I'll listen or mm-hmm. whatever. But it's like if the beat ain't what I want and I ain't hearing it, after a while, I'm just oh, I'm gonna just listen to the next person. I got you. That's just me. Not to, not to take away from that. I just yeah. All right. So next on the list, the fuckery. Um, I don't know if y'all know about it, but this all popped off last like yesterday. But now I want to make sure I see Dan- it for a video. Danny Lee. Yeah, yeah, baby. And I, I've seen this video. Now, did something happen physical between? Because all I saw was them no, arguing about so. her. You know. Like she was sitting there with the, like the wife beater and the sweatpants on, and he was sitting at the table with his assistant. Is that the video that everybody's talking about? Mm-hmm. That's the one. That's one. And then okay, he, he was like, on um, Instagram Live the whole time. Oh, okay, how long is that? Yeah, how long? He was, was he like, on uh, from, from what I'm hearing, he was like pretty much up, up there, like almost damn whole day responding. Um, because I'm trying to say, like he has a record of being on Instagram Live. Just okay. a lot. Right. Just in general or whatever. But really, I feel like he did that. So when he called the police, he have everything on record or whatever. And then if you got a camera on you, you're not going to do crazy stuff in my home. Right. Pretty much. But at the same time, you could, I kind of, to me, I feel like both are at fault at the situation. I'm whatever. trying to figure out what happened that made the police arrest her for assault or something. I saw that she got like assault charges. Like what? Minor, what did she do well? Did she tear some shit up? That's what that's what I'm trying to look because all I saw was that there's assault charges on her. They yeah, didn't really but put on that video, yet. I saw him explaining his side. I saw her like upset and they were talking back and forth, but I didn't see them like screaming at each other or like hitting each other or like I didn't see her punch him or smack him. I didn't see him push her or do nothing to her. Like they were just basically just to having me, a I- verbal disagreement. In the in the oh. while he was talking, it sounded like he was insinuating that she she gets handsy or whatever. And okay, and, got it. And according to her, she's been there for the past couple of months, taking care of the kid and just living there, mm. pretty much. But he comes on. He's my thing is if she's been there for the past couple started. of months, you can't act like she just out the blue or she just some sad chick because don't nobody live in my house mm. unless I let them. I think. I think what happened, because what I saw was uh, in another video, she said that she sent like a message or sent like plan B to where he was at. And he was probably messing with some chick at that time because they're not really together. Mm. She's just living there. So he he was, you know, he's the baby. He's a rapper. He's a famous rapper. Everybody's on it. And he has a baby blah, mama blah, that's blah. before her, too, that he be dealing with. Exactly. Um uh-huh. He was probably out messing with whatever chick he was messing with. And he probably messaged. I think she either sent him a message or sent plan B to the crib because she said he'd be going in the girl's raw and stuff like that. And that 
what caused well, that would explain the baby probably saw that he got mad and then when he got home and she was there sleep he was like look you gotta go that's when going in them raw but, you're gonna get <clears throat> crazy i'm very yeah and that's why i say it's a different bond just, you gotta be ready for that you're gonna get some nutty ones no pun intended. That's what yeah. I say. From that, like, it's going to be a little, oh, it's going to be crazy. And that's why I say that's his fault. He even admitted that that's his fault <laughs> up yeah. there. I feel like he was being sarcastic. And you got it. the you got the next 18 years to life to deal with. Mm-hmm. Enjoy that. But this is the crazy thing that I, I find weird. So a lot of women taking Danny's side naturally or whatever. I mean, she has a Matter point. Matter of fact. Like you keep trying yeah, to kick me has, out, but I mean, I'm, I'm going somewhere with your baby, and I like, yeah. If I'd have so, been here all this well, time, like, yeah, you just go somewhere else, or like, we figure something out. But like, that can't be the first thing to go to. I'm just gonna kick you out. But you like the internet, man. They got this. I don't want to say it's a cancel culture, but they got like this rage about them. That's like, what it is. Remember, there there was um, it was a part where I think Danny actually dissed uh the baby's previous baby mama. And mm-hmm. he had to step in front of it and was like, nah. And you know, everybody was like all against Danny's side mm. of the situation. Well, a lot of so people now, have not liked Danny late from the beginning when they first started messing with him. Exactly. Like last yeah. year. So like this is an ongoing anti-Danny late thing from a lot of his fans in Republic. Mm-hmm. I've seen that. So mm-hmm. and a lot of people didn't like her song that she came out with, Lemonade or something. They was she was talking about like mm-hmm. light skinned people. So it's like mm-hmm. it's a lot of yeah, it's a lot of overlapping things. Her perspective, yeah, individual, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying that the baby's in the wrong. Mostly, I just feel like the baby is just totally in the wrong in the situation because he put himself in that situation, whatever. And Personal accountability. Like, is okay. Yeah, uh, I, I I do feel like Danny, you your accountability is you knew w- what it was before you got here. <laughs> but Big anyway, facts. you knew what it was. You knew what it was when you got here. Like nothing about the baby says, "Hey, this is a wholesome family person to me." You know at all? Like Dave hey, Chappelle man, said, it "The baby for the kids." Man, every time I've seen the baby, is always an altercation. <laughs> he done shot somebody. Oh, whatever. Like it's some baby mama drama or yeah, something baby like got that. Some he he got he tells you. He tells you everything in his music, like every yeah. every piece of fuckery in his music. You got a full warning. You got a couple of albums of 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 warnings before you get into the situation or whatever. But I don't know. I think sometimes people they get they get in their ego. They think they might be able to change somebody. And that person continuously keeps shutting that's a real phenomenon, man. Out. I'm gonna tell you this: there is some <clears throat> changing. You can change yourself. You can change how you perceive somebody. You can't change mm-hmm. nobody else. You can suggest changes mm-hmm. all you want to, but a person will change if and when they want to change. And they got to, first of all, agree with you that what they're, you're asking them to change is a problem. The baby seems very content in who he is. Win, lose, or draw. Like he is pretty, mm-hmm. he seems pretty entrenched <sighs> in this is who I am, don't be. I haven't seen him switch up yet. <sighs> so, Mm-mm. In this situation, I'm going to say he's definitely wrong and he got his accountability for the fact that, like, you chose this young lady. You chose to put yourself in a situation where she's living with. You chose to allow these things to occur to get to this point. So you have to take responsibility now and deal with this shit because you made the best you got laid. With her, you are also accountable because you also chose this man. Like, you you decided to lay... Y'all decided to lay down together. He didn't lay down by himself. You allowed this to be a, a possibility when y'all made this decision to both have unprotected sex. So now that the baby's here, both of y'all got to grow the fuck up and do what's best for the kid. And that's really all it is. It ain't really no, it ain't, this ain't yeah. no deep situation. We've seen this before. Like be, be mature. Uh-huh. Y'all both adults. Give a fuck how young or old the adult is. Y'all are adults. Y'all have a child. Figure the co-parenting thing out. Neither one of y'all, I believe, are like hurting for money. So to me, this seems like a dumbass problem to have. Like, set it up, figure out the finances, figure out what it's gonna take to raise a kid. Y'all figure out how y'all gonna do like visitation so y'all get equal rights and ability to see the child and, and all that plan out the house, plan out the year and do this shit, man. Stop all this dumb shit on Instagram. You got the world in your business. Over what? Like, really, what is this over? What the problem is. 
is y'all still trying to finagle behind the scenes. And then the shit get, mm-hmm. you then when y'all get heated at each other or get annoyed with each other, then y'all want to start, well, you ain't my, mm. but no, you're probably canoodling her. That, that's the problem. Yeah. Because if you, if you have Comfortable. stopped having, if you have cut everything off and you have got it strictly in one way, these, this heat ain't going to be there. What it is, is you getting the back, the back action from baby mama one, you got it from baby mama two, but you really don't want to be with baby mama two, just still sliding in there. You wondering why she heated and why she feeling like that. Man, grow up. Me at home. Co-parent this child, because that's who's sitting there that's going to grow up in this environment, y'all said. And y'all should both know that's, better. That's who's getting the worst part of it. Do what y'all need to do for the kid, man. Yeah. And, and people, and some of y'all people need to just stop commenting. Yeah. Some of y'all are commenting and y'all either... Going through the same thing, been through the same thing. I ain't mad at people coming <laughs> over because these days you put it on Instagram Live, so you wanted to comment. You put it there. You could have recorded it on your phone as just a file. You chose to record it as an Instagram Live and talk to people while it's going to keep showing. That's what you wanted. So what I will say to the commenters is the same thing I would say to people who comment on. I was like, any comment on anything. Don't just say some shit. Have a real opinion on it that makes sense like have some mm-hmm. logic with it don't just be on there yeah, that, that, that. like all that rah-rah highly emotional shit ain't helping them it ain't really doing nothing so it's like a it's a wasted comment <laughs> like if you're gonna say something especially on the platform like his instagram laugh just say some shit that makes some sense give them some good advice if you've been through that situation male or female maybe say something in there that's gonna help them to like stop looking crazy on it like that's my thing. Or oh, don't man, say that at all shit, cool. and just be a spectator. And because you don't, the beautiful, the beautiful thing about social media, the beautiful thing about YouTube, the beautiful thing about all of these platforms that we have where we watch those lives and we're voyeurs is you can just be a voyeur. You can just watch. You don't have to. Come. There's nothing that says that you can't watch content and not do this. You can put your thumb. You can put that shit up on a on a podium or on your phone stand or whatever you're using and just sit back and watch. Treat it like a movie. Keep scrolling. Or reality show and just keep, keep on going. But Keep scrolling. You know, that's my opinion. Whatever. Yeah. People like this. Shit. Toxic people, shit ain't people, cute, people like drama. It's drama is in style. People <clears throat> like fuckery. That young Pharaoh shit crazy. People like it. Like all of the craziest shit, people hype it up. The real shit that people should be, the, the shit that actually be having some substance. Even the comedy, like fuckery does better than comedy. Comedy just made people happy and laugh. But mm-hmm. people that turn comedy into fuckery. Cool. Like it's just, people just like stupid. That's true. That is true. That's true. Talk baby Danny Lay, I'm going to pray for y'all. <clears throat> Go ahead, get y'all shit together and do what's right for the baby so the baby can grow up happy and healthy. Y'all want it too, because I know y'all both just new parents, and I'm going to slide on it. Don't be hitting wow. on it. I don't know about this assault shit. Don't be hitting on it. Woman or man, whichever one no, of y'all I don't do. think that's going Andy on. Lay, don't be hitting I'm glad on. that ain't going on. That shit is <clears throat> Very glad that it's not going on or whatever. And I think at this point, the baby has to be a lot more smarter than that. And I think that's the whole reason why he called the police. This so, true, true. But hey, man, you can't you can't be surprised for a guy acting childish if his name is the baby. That's a good point. His name like is the baby, man. That's a good point. I'm gonna come back on I tell you like this. Like I've always said in our past episodes, they be in a very toxic relationship too. I've called the police in the situation or the domestic situation. But the reason I called them was different. I called the police I was told, don't make me call the police on you. And I was and I told the other people must forget who I am. I call them like God damn so watch this. I think y'all need to get it. So it could have been one of them situations where he called him on this goddamn self just to prevent himself. From- Either way, I'm glad he called mm-hmm. him instead of doing the stupid thing. But whatever exactly. she got arrested for with this assault shit. Yeah. When I hear assault and I see a person get arrested, I'm like, ma'am, don't be beating on that. If he ain't put his hands on you, mm-hmm. don't put your hands on him. Talk that shit out like grown folk. If you can't talk it I out, just like- separate until y'all can. But don't be putting hands on you. Like that shit right there, that's when it just all bets off. And that I ain't with that. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Uh, you got them grades there like me, huh, bro? I see there, bro. Mm-hmm. I, see, I, see you, I see you salt there, champ. Get a whole bunch of them up there. Yeah, mine are intertwined in my locks. Mine ain't too visible, which is a blessing. I got yeah. this one right here somewhere. You grow yeah. it out to right here a little bit, you'll start to sell more because they start like right up in the side crease, like right where you cut your, your little mm-hmm. chin patch. If you mm-hmm. let it grow out a little wider for a minute, <laughs> you'll start to sell. This, this is the thing though, they don't grow no wider. <laughs> it stays in this one little island right here. Well, you good. Right dude. here. You're this, blessed. This one island. You're going to have great no, skin I got on one, the side. 
I got one singular strand that's like right here in the front, and then one within the uh within the goatee, whatever. Yeah, but gray hairs is something we gotta deal with, baby. <clears throat> I'm just, I just want the shit to just go ahead and just go all gray at this point. Like I just want the full shit. Let's get it. Like I just want to <laughs> just have that look, just uh, a full white yeah. beard with white look with white locks. I'll rock that shit. All right, the fuck up that shit. I think that shit would look hard. Cause I'm dark too, so that shit'll like balance all my skin. And, oh, what nigga? Tell me shit. I got mine's all entangled in my dread, so you can't even really see them anyway. I might dip the tips of my shit in like some <clears throat> red, so that shit'll be like all white with red tip. Oh, that shit! Oh, I get my. Who the hell is this old ass nigga with these tips? But do you know what the hard part? Ass, you know what the dope shit'll be though. Cause they will be like, oh, he look good for his age, thinking I'm like 60. <laughs> they be like, damn, his age. What you 67? <laughs> no. No. Not even 40. <laughs> I just look like this. I just got I just got a handful of gray. That's yeah. With the red tip. Well, you never know what you, you never know what age a black person is. You know, you don't is- crack. Black don't crack. Black does not crack, does not crack. Yeah. crack. But I'll tell you what does crack. What's that? Some crack you need to come get is the crack we can find from Face in our merchandise and apparel. Face, how can they get the merchandise and apparel if they... Well, once again, as I always say, each and every, each and every, you can always come and visit us at where? rtrayclothing.com. Once again, that's rtrayclothing.com. I'll say a lot slower for you. rtrayclothing. Mm-hmm. Dot com spelled a r t r e clothing dot com. Come check us out, man. Exclusive partners merchandise. You got the ACA three merchandise. Come check us out, man. Handbags, decorative pillows, one pillow for your couch. We got partners pillows. Um, face mask, of course. COVID still out there. Those who don't want it back, if you really want to wear a face mask, we got them. Anybody want a face mask, we got them. Um, variety of stuff, kaleidoscope things, cornucopia of items. Come check us out, man. A cornucopia. Yes. Um, got to use it. Got to use it. Um, and uh, if you want to support in another way finance, um, we got a few ways you can do that as well. Um, you can sign up for a subscription um, on either buymeacoffee.com or on our anchor.fm backslash the partners. Um, either one of those backslash the partners, buymeacoffee.com backslash. Go there, check us out um, for $4.99. Anchor. You can sign up for a membership. Anchor. Um, on Anchor, it's just basically a donation if you want to just support the channel monthly and um, allow us to put out content and grow the channel in our second year. That's going to be coming up soon. Um, feel free to do so. Um, if you want to get a membership where you get exclusive content for members only, you get members only lives, you get members only events where we do like watch parties and listening parties together. Um, you get exclusive access to us behind the scenes via our Discord. You get um, unedited episodes of every podcast we do. A um, whole load of things. Um, feel you get uh, promo codes and special offers on um, all of our, all of our merchandise from rtradeclothing.com. So sign up for a membership if you feel like it. Um, you can also donate for as little a dollar as a dollar on buymeacoffee.com or on our cash app at dollar sign partner tears. So um, yeah. If you want to do it, do it. Cool. But um, main thing we need you to do is always like, share, and subscribe. Um, and if you want to um, get in touch with us um, outside of podcasts, if you want to talk to us outside of a podcast topic, you just want to, you know, interact with us and see what we be doing outside of our days of podcast. How can they get in touch with us, Pat? At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That is the Twitter, that is the TikTok, that's the Instagram, that's the Facebook. And on Facebook, we at Tiz Face Pat are the partners. Follow us there, hit us up, you can comment, like, subscribe, all that. All that. I, you know a nigga is like one day apart, because I damn sure just lipped everything you were saying word for word, but had no <laughs> idea what you was about to say. I just was going, yo. Pause. I don't TikTok, even know how y'all. that sounded. Look, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we own everything, man. Um, but if you can't remember that all of the we done said, we done said a lot of shit. Just go to right. thepartners.com. T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S dot com. That's thepartners.com. 
podcast there, Dot YouTube com. there, Facebook there, Instagram there, Cash App there, memberships there, everything there, live stream there, Mama everything there, there every, everything there. there. Everything, every, everything, <laughs> there, every, everything, every, Face everything, there. There. There, come P on there. down to the partners.com because everything, every, everything, there. everything, every, everything, there. Every, everything, every, everything, there. so just come on down to the partners.com. That's T A G P O D N A S dot com. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you see the website, you see the website, and yeah, we do got cookies, so you know, I click that. Them. But you go down, you know what I'm saying? You see everything there. You see the clothes, you see the podcast, you see live stream, you see all that good shit, man. One-stop shop. You see the contact, you see the information there, man. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead, click around, you know what I mean? Get up on it on your laptop or whatever. Thepartners.com, one-stop shop for everything the partners related. As always, man, thank y'all for supporting by just giving us your time. Your listen, your watch means a lot. And I'm proud to announce we finally got monetized on Anchor. Dot FM. Hey. So please, as much as you can, listen on Anchor. If you go to your other platforms from there, start on Anchor first. Um, it definitely helps out the podcast. And um, if you're listening, don't just click and then click off. Just go ahead and let it play and actually get your full listen in. And if something resonates with you, share the content. Don't be a hog. Don't yeah, be indeed. greedy. Like, Give to the needy. Share the content. Um, as always, man, we appreciate y'all being here with us. And I have been one third of the partner, your boy Tiz. And I'm along with the other third of the partners and his random trumpet or whatever, whatnot. It's the Padawan here. And I am along with the flu monkey. Now, I mean, <laughs> dramatic pause. What's that in this space? And least thank y'all for coming. Winning this race. Let's get out of here, fellas. Indeed, man. Indeed. We see y'all for the year episode. We'll see y'all around these YouTube and podcast streets. Love y'all. We about the thing.